problems. And money looks for people who solve problems. Not people who pray. I've said it. <laughs> I like the way you are looking at me. I've said it. You can pray and shake your head. <laughs> when you finish, your landlord will be waiting for you. Because life is principled. And if you are even a student of the Bible, you realize he says, see a man that is diligent in his work. Diligent. Spirituality only makes what you do in terms of your work easier. For instance, last week I was telling you that I prepared an account and then the account was not balancing. And I was very frustrated and I had a deadline. And I think I'm very good at what I do. I did everything. I couldn't do it. I just shut my eyes and prayed in tongues for 30 seconds. Within 30 seconds, I saw what was not balancing the account. That spirituality, you don't go to a job interview. They say, what do you have to offer? I, I, I have prayer to offer. I have prayer to offer. And, and that is why the world, eh, they are moving in very serious things than, the, 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 than believers. I, I was telling the minister of state in the MPP government yesterday, I was speaking to him and I was telling him that, you see, some of the reports, his people, like finance reports and these people, uh, sometimes when I look at the report, I wonder why people say they are doctorates. And they are, they are shallow-minded like that. And he was laughing. He said, oh, they are political people. Only because people don't think. They don't think. I wake up in the morning. Wake up at 12 a.m. Praying for one, two hours. And then you are sleeping till 8, 8 or 9 a.m. No job. No tax ahead of you. <laughs> Madam, you'll be poor. You'll be so poor and God will be crappy. An unbeliever has already woken up at seven and has gone to open his shop. And there is a believer going to work and needs Milo. And knows that you are the church member, but looks at your shop, your shop is not open. But looks at an unbeliever's shop, the shop is open. Buys from the shop. The shirt you are wearing, you don't know whether it is from a Buddhist or a Muslim. As long as it's a good shirt, it doesn't matter where it is from. If it enters your hands, you, you sanctify it. If there are two mechanics, if there is a mechanic in this church, that when he, he works on your car, the car now develops a greater fault. There is another mechanic who is a Muslim. At the sound of your car, he's able to tell you what is the problem with your car and source it with precision. Who will you take your car to? See, one day I was praying and asking the Lord a question about something. You know the answer he gave me? He said, son, think. <laughs> think. So I went to the beach in the night. Around 1 a.m. And I sat at the beach and I started thinking. And the question I was asking God, the solution came out of thinking. He said, come and let's reason together. So God believes in thinking. Thinking is what gives you worth in the kingdom. That's why mad people don't vote. Because as they are mad, they can't think. So it is assumed that their value is lost. I pray for somebody today that you will not just follow one principle in the kingdom, but you will be a practitioner of all the principles. 
That works in the kingdom. A lot of principles work in the kingdom. A lot. Because you can be a tighter and be poor. You can be a tighter and be poor. Because the blessings of God doesn't come in a vacuum. God blesses a man by what he does. So you can be a tighter and still be poor. And tightening does not necessarily bring material blessing. Tightening brings you to a place where God can give you wisdom and ideas to engage to bring you more money. I like the way you are looking at me this morning. I pray that there is nobody here that is coming to God because of a crisis situation. I pray that there is nobody here that is looking for God because of the fact that you are in a particular situation. And when that situation is solved, you disappear. There were people who used to come to my service here. Through this service by the hand of God, God opened doors for them. Some are working in the bank and all that. They have disappeared. You don't see them again. The only time you, they know you exist is when there is another problem. I pray that you will not be one of those people. Your amen is looking for intercessory prayer. You will not be one of those people. Look at someone and say, I will not be one of those people. So, fellowshipping and coming to God's house is needed or has become more important because of the season and day we find ourselves in. Because by God's prophetic agenda, the strength of the church is in fellowshipping. Did, did you see one of my sons drew my attention to something about uh, Nathaniel something. I think that he, they, they said he said people should use Jesus as their profile picture. And yesterday Jesus was trending all over the place. Some people even got shocked and was wondering whether the trumpet has blown. And it was trend. And that was an indication of believers coming into fellowship and agreement and Jesus was all over the place and people was wondering what was happening and some people were even angry the strength of the church is in fellowship I preached a message here several years ago that understanding the power of one man prayer there is power in one person praying, but there is greater power in a corporate people coming together to pray. So there is a blessing that goes with fellowship. Also, you see, yesterday I had a vision, and in the vision, I had a gunshot. And in a gun, when I heard a gunshot, I saw things that looked like they were animals, chickens. And I saw that when the gunshot paid, the chickens scattered. And I saw that the guns started looking for the chickens individually. And was killing them. Then in another vision, I heard a gunshot, but the chickens were not scattered. The chickens were together. And the impact of the gun shop did not affect their togetherness. That is why I prepared this message to preach today. Also, I don't know whether you remember. You see, when we were in school and we became born again, we loved fellowship so much that we were not very selfish people. Any book you get, anything you get that is a revelation, you share it with friends. We, we, are in, we are in a place now where there is no longer fellowship. And everybody wants to see that <laughs> I carry a certain level of revelation. 
I, I want to speak and be different. And you, and you see, sometimes when I listen to people, especially some of the people who are very popular on social media, I don't listen to them based on what they say. I, you, you can be very eloquent and, be no, and know how to play with words and not be spiritually weighty. So your words are convincing. You know how to put grammar together to, co to, to come out with a sentence that will make people think you walk in revelation. But spiritually, you are not heavy. I don't listen to such people. The Bible refers to them as clouds without rain and wells without water. They are eloquent. They know how to play with words. They know how to marry scripture together. And make certain statements that will get people very excited. And preach as if they are singing. But their preaching does not affect their spirits of people. It moves and stirs up the emotions of people. And after the emotions of people are stirred, when the people leave the auditorium, they become empty. I'm preaching. But there are people like John Ed, uh, Jonathan Edwards. They, speak, they are not eloquent, but they speak God's word. People are cut to a place of conviction. As they sit there, they hear God's word. God's word has raised them, and they begin to cry. They cry from the depth of their heart and enter a place of repentance and conviction. That's the kind of grace I need. Not the grace to entertain people. There is power in fellowship. So the Bible said that when we come to church, it began to mention the spiritual forces that are present in our gathering. Didn't God say that where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them? So God appreciates the Lord is with you, yes. But he has also put out a principle that I am with you. But when I am with you, I am in you, and we come together. I am in your means. So you cannot take one and leave the other. You'll be frustrated. I prophesy to somebody, your appetite for fellowship will come alive afresh. I, I don't like your amen. I say it will come alive afresh. So coming to church is not coming to a human society. If you want to look at the scripture, the house of God, which you are this morning, is the mountain of God. is the habitation of the Holy One. So God said that a day is coming where the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted. What he was saying prophetically in my agenda, a time is coming where the church will be the only relevant body on earth. Have you realized that when the virus came, the church was the only secured place for people? The church. That's why people are attacking the church now. You don't need to be rushing to church because you are faced with a challenge. Because the church of God is God's city. That is the place he has chosen to put his name. That is the place he has called, he has chosen to call his holy habitation. And anybody who understands the relevance of that place will benefit from it. I didn't hear your amen. amen. That is why I've said it all the time. Understanding is very crucial and very important for any endeavor in life. So success in God, success in your work with God, success in your fellowship with God, success in your intimacy with God is anchored on your level of understanding. It's anchored on your level of understanding. Because if you want to walk in faith to please God, understanding is the operational key. Faith cannot be born without understanding. The only way faith for salvation will come is when you understand the message of salvation. If you understand the message of salvation, you have faith to assess the finished work of Christ. 
So one of the things the church needs is understanding. The reason why people go when it's Friday, they put on their status, thank God it's Friday. It's because they have certain understanding of what alcohol does for them, what the nightclubs does for them, what some of the music they play does for them. Some of those musics that are addictive. What it does for them. So, they have an understanding. I, I, have, you, have, you, have you realized that there are people who can drink, sleep in the gutter, and they'll drink again? Oh, prophet, you are welcome. Please, please sit here. Sit here. Can we welcome with a clap offering prophet Isaac Baby? I thought we are welcome. God bless you for coming. Understanding. You see, understanding is everything in the kingdom. I came to a place of understanding. That is why everything I do here, I don't take one CD from anybody. Because I came to a place of understanding that when you work for God, God, there is nobody God has appointed. So he told them, when I sent you with that purse and sleep, did you lack anything? They said nothing. And, and, and I can tell you with all authority that I am more blessed now than when I was in the band. I was more blessed. Of all, and I'm not saying that because of grammar. When I was here and I was at the bank and I was prophesying, they can testify to that. I fly to the U.S. I stay in U.S. only for one day. I fly back. Nobody buy a ticket for me. I buy it myself. All those times, all those investments can build an estate house. But I came to a place of understanding that God who has called me is a better paymaster. There is, no, uh, there is nothing anybody can give me that can be compared to the salary God will pay me. And salary is not even in money. Because you can be paid 20,000 Ghana cities a month and you use it to service sickness. The fact that you are not lied at the back of any hospital bed is enough salary. Because people are paying any amount of money just to be strong. I'm preaching. They are swallowing pills a day. They carry pills. When they forget their pills, they are in trouble. That is enough salary. Do you know, the, one of the salary is that, do you know the number of people that have pl plotted my downfall? There are even places I went to preach. And when they brought a prophet, and the prophet was now, they now said they have a prophet in the church. I decided not to go to that church anymore because I want the prophet, the church people to accept that particular prophet. But that particular prophet was, because I am in existence, he was still scared, scared about me. Manufactured all kinds of story. One day I confronted him. He told me over the phone. He cut the line, called back. I said, oh, therefore, I am sorry. The reason why I said those things was that I heard your voice say some things about me. But God has kept me and I'm still standing. It's enough salary. It's salary. When you come to a place of understanding, your life becomes very easy. If you like, go to God. Ask him, when was the last time I prayed that he should anoint me? Go and ask him. If you like, die now and ask him. Go and ask him. I can't remember the last time I ever prayed to God. Give me anointing. But I came to a place of understanding that any anointing I need is already on earth. So what I should do is that if I, I, I convert the grace on somebody, let that person become a prayer project. So I pick the person, pray about his ministry, his life, and everything about him. And as he increase, the oil will rub on me. It's a place of understanding. I was telling them the last time at Calvary. I was, I was speaking on the blessing 
of divine leading. And I was telling them that I have come to a place where anything God tells me, I do it. Sunday, God asked me to ask a man to take the wife to, to dinner because it's a long time the wife has laughed. <laughs> hey, God. <laughs> that, that's what the Bible said. And laughing uh, is good medicine. So I asked him, how much will you take? He said 2,000. You know, 2,000 Ghana cities. The Lord says, give him the money. I didn't have 2,000 in my pouch. The only thing I had was foreign currency. That was the only physical money I had in my pouch. I took my pouch and I gave him 250 euros. You would think that when I was giving him that money, is he my father's child? <laughs> or is he my child? But I needed to obey God. And I have come to a place of understanding that as I am obedient to that word from God, he shifted my level. So I gave him my 250 euros. He took the money. He didn't even say thank you. On top of you were there. He didn't say thank you. He only meandered the money like that. Somebody's wife. It's not my girlfriend. Somebody's wife. Now, me first can not, 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 I after all, we are a big service member. But then somebody, somebody's wife, they will go out there, go and enjoy, and come back and minister to each other, and I'll be somewhere sleeping. And that is my money. But I have come to a place of understanding. Let me tell you this thing. I was telling them that there was one time I was going to the office, I was driving towards Accra Girls, there is cho former Choice FM. I just heard him tell me, pack there. I packed there. I saw a man in a black Lexus car. He said, give him 2,000 Ghana cities. I took out 2,000, went to the man, and gave him 2,000 Ghana cities. And I realized that the black Lexus car, the, the, the back of the car has been broken. And the man has put his head on the steering like that. So I gave him 2,000. And he asked me, what is this for? I said, the Lord spoke to me to give you 2,000. No, no, he was a Pentecost elder. Then tears fell from his eyes. He said, where do you work? Or where are you going? I said, I work. I'm the director of finance for this organization at Abelene Bay Traffic Light. I said, Ghana Baptist Convention. He said, what is that? I said, it's, it's uh, Baptist Churches Association at Abelene Bay Traffic Light. He said, what? Ghana Baptist Convention. I said, yes. Then he told me about what happened to him. He came with business partners to have a meeting, rented a place, not knowing he had money in his suitcase. Instead of taking the money to the meeting, he left the money in the suitcase in the car, and somebody broke it and took the, and it was about 70 something thousand dollars. And then he need us at that time that he put his head there, he needed to pay the difference of the rent of the place and has been calling his PA, and the PA was not picking. And that 2,000 paid. You know, one week exactly. I was just there in the office. They said, somebody is looking for me. And this is a man that came. He said, I just came to say thank you. Gave me an envelope. That time, I needed money to pay people's school fees here at big service. Eight of them. Some in law school. I needed money to pay their school fees. But God knew that I needed the money. But he had the enam, the enam. But I need to come to that place of understanding. He gave me an envelope. Open the envelope. $20,000. Understanding is what rules in the kingdom. There is nothing God will tell me to tell you. To give you. That I will not give you. Because I have come to a place of understanding. I will not stand on the pulpit and be defending myself. Because I have come to a place of understanding. I have a master that will defend me. So no matter what you say, you can say anything about the prophetic ministry. It's, not, it's, it's, it's none of my business. You see, and drone chew that I will say and drone yet. We need a new as it doesn't mean say all women need you and you. Understanding. 
understanding. That is why a lot of people, if you understand the person you are living with, it will make marriage very easy. Some people are just not understandable. Yes, I agree with that. I know what I'm saying. No matter what you do, you can't understand them. Because the thing that is following them is, is a generational thing. So when we come to a place of understanding in God's house, we become a blessing. Because understanding is what puts people in command. So the Bible says about the people of Issachar that they understood the time and they were in command. Because they got to a place of understanding, they were always in command. What is the blessing? The blessing or the impact or the blessing that goes with God's house. Now, let me give you scriptural examples of people that benefited from God's house. Scriptural example number one, Jacob. Jacob. How many of you know that Genesis 28, that when Jacob wrestled, when Jacob was running away and had a dream and a revelation and saw angels ascending and descending, the statement he, he said, he made was that God was here and I knew it not. And don't forget that when he came back, he put a stone there and when he came back, that place was called Bethel. The house of the Lord. So Jacob benefited from God's house. Then number two, in Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 13, the woman that was bent over, double bent, benefited from being in God's house. Number three, how many of you know that Moses had his calling technically in God's house? Because when Moses got to that place, God told him, remove your son, that the place you are is a holy place. That means it's a place I have identified with. Then I can tell you about Isaiah. Isaiah had revelations of God in God's house. He said the day my uncle King Uzziah died, I saw, I was in his temple, I saw the Lord. Those are people that benefited from God's house. That there was one other man in the book of Acts, ladies and gentlemen, that Paul was preaching, and when Paul was preaching, that man slept and dropped dead. Thank God he was not in a nightclub. Because that is a demonic sleep. When sleep is after you, they can put speaker here, you still sleep. But the good news is that he slept in God's house. And when he slept in God's house, God's house has the capacity to bring him back. So, Opa, go and fall sick at the nightclub. If somebody falls sick here, it will be very easy for me to pray for the person. Because it's in God's house. But if you go and fall sick at the nightclub, I will not come there. What are you even going to do there in the first place? Some of you are not seeing anything because of where you are. Where you are matters. Where you are per time matters because where you are will determine who sees you. And who sees you determines what favor you can receive. So where you are at any point in, in time matters. Then we can talk about the man that was lame from his mother's womb. He received his liberty at the temple gate in the book of Acts. So the house of God is a place of turnaround for many. Jesus knew the importance of God's house. That when he was so young that his parents took him to the temple, he decided to stay in the temple. And he didn't even want to go back because of the significance of God's house. So the psalmist is telling us, I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of God. Some of us are glad when it is party time. Because the Coca-Cola we have not drank, drank for ages. We will get it free of charge. There are people here who are not excited because it's Wednesday. But let Friday come. 
Thank God it's Friday. Then they will start placing, playing music in their head. Mona Nisa, Mona Nisa. Gudu, we be dancing. Gudu, gudu, gudu. When we are doing praises here, you will not dance. You, 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 you are as if you are the most meekest person on earth. But those your bodies, when you get the right heat beat, we will, even angels even wonder whether you are truly the son of God. What is the impact of God's house? Number one, the house of God is a place of the anointing. The house of God is a place of the anointing. So Psalm 133, how good and how pleasant it is when brethren come together like this in unity. It's like the precious ointment. If you are looking for authentic anointing, it is in God's house. Uh, uh, also, the men of God that are here, there is a way. Eh? When you enter God's house, there is something that comes on you. There is something that you feel. You can enter God's house being broken. You can enter God's house with pain in your heart. But a singer can just lift up one song. And that song will bring refreshing to your soul. Because there is the release of the anointing. As we are seated here like this, eh, we all have different graces we are carrying. And when we come together in oneness, that grace is, received, is released. I, I saw one anointing one day, and that is another time, that is another... Uh, 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 2024, I'm going to shift my prophetic ministry into a healing ministry. Yeah. Because there is an anointing that I caught and then there was a timeline attached to it. Though there are people who experience healing through the ministry now, it's going to go to a higher dimension. I remember when Pastor Chris brought Benny Hinn, Benny Hinn to Ghana. By the grace of God, I had access into that building. It was, it was not easy. I use everything possible to have access. And when you look at the video, I was sitting at the third row. And I remember when Benny Hinn, Duncan Williams, uh, uh, Pastor Chris, Bishop Dark, when they came together and the microphone was given to Bishop Dark to pray, the atmosphere changed because there was a combination of anointings. And something shifted and entered me. That's a story for another day. So as we are gathered here like this, there is an anointing that is released. Amen. That's why when I'm preaching to you, I don't need a song to prophesy. Like last week Wednesday, I'm preaching and prophesying to people. I don't need a song to enter my realm of the anointing. Because when we are gathered like this, there is the activation of the anointing. There is a stirring of that which has the capacity to break yokes and lift burdens. I prophesy to somebody under the sound of my voice that as we are gathered here this morning or this afternoon, I declare that the anointing is about to cause every burden on your life to be lifted. As you scream and amen, you just receive your testimony. How good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in, in unity, in fellowship, in oneness, in togetherness. The anointing is released. Number two, there is the commanded blessing. There is the commanded blessing. Now, also, there are blessings and there are commanded blessings. Commanded blessing is a blessing where the people who are commanded have no other option than to bless you. So, when you enter the region of commanded blessing, God can even move inadequate people to bless you. And if they have to bless you, they will bless you and bless you and bless you. Now, you see, let me tell you something. Do you know what it means for a nation like Israel to go to a nation like the Egyptians and tell them, we are about to leave you. Give us silver and gold. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. If you have somebody that is leaving you and say, give me your properties. Will you give it to him? You will never do that. But Egypt was under a command. It 
takes a command for a ravens to bring food to Elijah. Ravens are best that are perpetually hungry. Let me even surprise you. The widow of Zarephath was under command to feed Elijah. So she has no other option than to feed Elijah. I prophesy to somebody whose amen will be the loudest. Because you are here this morning, you are about to enter a realm of commanded blessing. <laughs> that there is a blessing that is commanded that you have no other option than to enter. Whether you like it or not, that blessing will be reflected upon your life. I declare on somebody whose amen will thunder. I declare in the name of Jesus, may you enter the realm of commanded blessing. There is something called the commanded blessing. And I pray that somebody will enter that realm. Where people do things for you and you don't beg them. You are not a beggar. But God will just command somebody to favor you. God will just command somebody that will call you and say that I just remembered you, I saw you in a dream. And the Lord says I should give you this morning. It's called the commanded blessing. And that is one of the blessings you can receive in being in God's house. I prophesy to somebody, enter the realm of commanded blessing. In the name of Jesus, you have been calling people to do things for you. You have been begging people to do things for you. But after today, you are leaving that realm. People are about to do things for you because they are commanded. Somebody shout, commanded! So when you read the scripture, he didn't say he said there, there at the place of fellowship at the place of fellowship there he commanded his blessing l l there is power in gathering there is power in gathering and Muslims know that than Christians That is why no matter the community a Muslim is, if that community, a mosque is not there, he will create a mosque in his house. He will gather a group of Muslims just to create. That's why most, it is we that are divided along denominational line. And Christianity is not about denominationalism. Christianity is not about denominationalism. There's all kinds of debates. We there, we should meet. It's not, it's not, you see, God is not interested in that. Sunday to God, oh, yeah, it, it, it means it is it means anything. Yes, the subject of Sabbath is not a day because Jesus came as the Sabbath. Jesus is the Sabbath. So in the in the New Testament revelation, Sabbath is no longer a day; it's a person. Yes, Just like a resurrection is not an event; it's a person. I am the resurrection and the life. It's no longer an event. It's a person. I laid down my life. I will take it again. I will resurrect. Because I am that resurrection. There's too many debates in the church. And the truth of the matter is that God instituted the Sabbath in the Old Testament as a tool for rest. Muslims are do you know something? When an imam gathers Muslims together and they tell a Muslim, kill, every agenda in the mind of the Muslim is deleted. The only thing that is ringing in their mind is kill, kill, because their commander has spoken. And they learn that from the Jews. That is why when God told Joshua, this book of the law, meditate upon it. The book of the law were words that was written by Moses. The Bible was not there. So what God was saying is that Moses who was your commander, the things he has said and written, think about them and meditate it. That is why your pastor it will always eternally be relevant in your life. Coming to church is not Palongo clap. 
Your president is not more superior than your pastor. No. The most difficult institution to manage is the church. Because it's, it's, you don't account in parliament. Like the way they are asking them to come and account for COVID fund and they are running away. You, 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 that place you account for the souls of people. Not, not, not taxes. Souls. There is a blessing that comes to church. When we are together like this with one accord, with one mindset, and we are not in a place of conflict, and we are in unity and fellowship, there is a blessing that comes. So that means that a pastor can come and preach God's word and not even mention anybody's name, and people are blessed. The church lies gimmicks too much. The kind of mindset we have with African religion is what we have brought to the church. So we think that when we come to church and there is no movement of chairs and there is no calling of phone numbers, God does not move. But God moves sometimes in fire, but sometimes in still small voice. But you need to be sensitive to recognize the rhythms of God per time and what it carries. Because God cannot be predicted. The wind blow it where it listed. You hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell where it is going. I met a man who can't sleep. Took all kinds of drugs. Still can't sleep. He can take volume or whatever. He will not sleep. I look at, as he was talking, I look at him. I just heard, laugh at him. I laugh at him. He stared at me. I said, it's over. Go. He said, oh, prophet. I said, no, you go. Go. I just laughed. He was leaving my office and turning his back. Entered into his car. Landed at his office. Sat down, told the secretary to bring him tea. By the time the secretary brought the tea, the guy was fast asleep in his chair. Secretary was calling him. They poured water on him before he came back. He said, it's a long time I've slept. Called one of the office drivers to take him home and he went to sleep just by laughing. Why did somebody let your mighty power and yet be there and deliver us? Come on! Come on! Come on! Pie! Me and Pie. Ube Pie! Me and Pie. Me, I have a philosophy. I, I have not met people like that. And I can't meet people like that. Me see Pierre. We see one Pierre. Anya Masep. Anya Masep. We see one Pierre. Tina Hoi. Tina Ho. Because Anya mean I'm meeting with two Ho. It is a we see one Pierre. And people enjoy that. They enjoy that attraction. Pierre, me Pierre. And then I would hear you know. Ooh, ooh. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Are you saying the spiritual capacity I carry? Devils cannot talk to me. Not one. No, no, not one devil can talk to me. Talk to me for what? One day I met a man who was threatening somebody. My former boss, he was threatening him in my presence. Who was threatening him? If you don't take me there, though I'm your G, I, I, I am your staff, you are my boss, I will deal with you. I, I stood from the chair. I said, you are too small. I said, you are too small. Even feathers, you don't have one. You are too small. That, those your mouth you have been using to eat okra. Don't use it to say those things again. There, there is a realm you enter where those things no longer entertain you. I, you know, first is when I prophesy and mention people's phone numbers and then I said, I'm deep. I, I'm deep. I, I say, I'm deep. But right now, mentioning people's phone numbers is nothing to me. If you can remember, I stood here and told you that Nigeria big churches, 
they should be very careful because I see people shooting in churches. I told you here, I'm in Ghana. I am in West Africa. I'm in Teshinungwa, but I'm telling you something that will happen ahead of time. One of the things a prophet should be celebrating is when God reveals his secrets. He said, I reveal my secrets. So it's not about people's name. It's about God's end time agenda that nobody knows. Those are some of the things you should be celebrating as a prophet. Not somebody's phone number. What is phone number? What is, don't you know your phone number? <laughs> and I'm not saying it because I can't mention people's phone number. I was at Cabri, I was mentioning people's phone number. Sundays, I was mentioning people's phone number. That phone number is nothing. It is fundamentals of prophecy. And, and I have people who say they are prophets and they put chalks that they are teaching people how to mention phone number. Me, me I can't teach you. <laughs> Although, I can't teach you. It's a realm I enter. It cannot be explained. It cannot be taught. I'm not saying they can't teach it. But what I'm saying is that spiritual things to a certain extent cannot be taught. I can tell you how to prophesy. I can tell you the pitfalls in prophecy. And I can tell you what to do to get to a place of intimacy with God. But to teach you how to prophesy is the core, the sole responsibility of the spirit. Because the spirit has the capacity to reveal what he wants to reveal to you. <laughs> Nobody taught me to see people's phone numbers. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody has done that before. But I got to a place of revelation. There are certain prophets when you bring them here, they see snake in revelation. They say it's demonic. But snake in prophetic is not always demonic. Snake can be something good. Depending on the context of the prophetic revelation. Dragon in prophetic revelation is not always evil. I like the way the whole place is quiet. So I can't take a chalk to teach people. I can pray for you to enter my realm. But I also need to teach you what to do to sustain that realm. Because it's not about entering the realm. It's about sustaining the realm. It's not about entering the realm. You see, I've worked with God so much no, to a certain extent. You see, as I sit here, if I want to start prophesying then, even with that music and organ, I know how to shift and I'll enter the terrain of the spirit. It's like you driving consistently on the N1. If you are somebody that lives in Tema and you are consistently on the motorway, you will get used to a place where you understand that even if your eyes is off the steering, you will know that when I'm getting to this place, it's likely there will be a pothole there because you are used to that. If you ask God, if you see God, ask him, does he know Eric? <laughs> ask somebody, does God know you? You know, somebody, some, one of my sons came from Sunyani and said, uh, Daddy, I, 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 I brought a seed offering. I want impartation of anointing. I said, the gift of God cannot be bought. It cannot be bought. What you are doing is gambling. There are people here I may never lay hands on. But as they sit down Wednesday or Saturday listening to me, desiring what I have, it will rub on them. Number three. The house of God is the place of visitation, divine visitation and encounter. I told you about Isaiah's encounter in God's house. The house of God is a place of encounter and visitation. Whenever you stay away from God's house, you are staying away from the possibility of divine encounter. <laughs> I heard one of my mentors, Bishop David Oyedepo, he said 
This man now has the, the, the baton of the spirit of faith that he got from Kenneth Hagen. He traveled all the way to Oklahoma. And then Kenneth Hagen was preaching and he was at the top. And then all of a sudden he saw Kenneth Hagen. And then Kenneth Hagen's face changed like a baby's face. And the face was, it's you that is looking at my face. And no, I have not cut my beard. Or I have not cut my head. There are other people that are looking beyond what I have worn. They look at me and then there is something. You see, what you decide to see is what you see. I went to Reverend Eastwood, asked me to come and see him. I went to his house. When he came out of his room, instead of seeing Reverend Eastwood, I see a transformed face. What you want to see is what you want to see. All of a sudden, he saw a man whose face was dripping with oil. Then something was fired to him. He said, from today, you have taken over the baton from Kenneth Hagan. And that is how he entered the spirit of it. And Chair Biana Kenneth Hagen who here. So Kenneth Hagen is dead. Spirit of just men made perfect. But he's bodily in Oye Depo. <laughs> the house of God is a place of visitation. He took Kenneth Copeland's book on prosperity and Gloria Copeland. And those are books from God's house. Read them. And then he shouted, I can never be poor. You know, Kenneth uh, Kenneth Copeland came to Oedipo's church. And then when he got home back to U.S., he called Oedipo and asked him, you said you learned the principle from us. But it looks like our principles are not correct. Your own is the correct one. How do you gather multitude of people like that? Oedipo said, there is no member of my church. Every member of my church, I dance them there. (laughs) That means that if you're a pastor, you go to church and two people come. Thank God. It is only in giving, being grateful that they'll graduate to three. People don't have visit, uh, encounters. Encounters are not just in closets. Encounters are not just in the place of waiting. As we are in church now, you can receive an encounter. I prophesy to somebody, God is visiting you right now. I don't like your amen. I said, God is visiting you right now. Your amen must sound thunderous. I said, God is visiting you right now. And it's encounter that makes people, eh, they express the possibility, you can only express the possibilities of the spirit by encounter. You will never know who you are until you encounter God. You can be a mighty man of value, but be hiding from the Midianites until God encounters you. When you encounter God, the, 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 your, your reason for being in existence or being in the way of the spirit before you became a physical reality is downloaded. I never knew I was a prophet until I encountered. If there was no encounter, sir, by this time I will still be doing finance. Maybe I'll just look for some political party and join. And me too, I'll chop some. Everybody's chopping now. But at the place of encounter, it's a encounter that made a man by name Amos who said, I am a gatherer of sycamore tree, become a prophet. Do you know that Elisha was not the only son of Elijah? As a matter of fact, Elisha was not even the son of Elijah. Because if you're a student of the Bible, there was one person Elijah told that stay here. And that person left until God spoke to Elijah and Elijah anointed three people and one of them was Elisha. And even with that one, he understood the principle. When he told him that he is going, the sons of the prophet even told Elisha, this man is going. That means that they knew that the man would be caught up. But this other one understood a principle that if this man goes with what he carries, we are doomed. So I need an encounter and a visitation. So when the mantle dropped, it was a mantle of encounter. So when he encountered the mantle and stood before that same river, he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Because of his encounter. 
Encounter makes people count in their generation. You cannot counter the devil until you have encounter. Also, which doctors are small people for me? Which doctors are small people for me? You know, I heard in the papers that somebody said somebody brought the daughter for rituals. When you read the story on the surface, you think it's true. But there's more to that story. That thing was a total setup. And that thing was a total, total setup. Can you imagine with my gift? I'm a CID man. I'm a CID. I don't need to do investigation. I don't need camera to catch you. Because I've come to a place of encounter. There is no witch I am afraid of. You are a witch. <laughs> I'm, I'm a spiritual territorial witcher. I have the capacity to bewitch witches. Because I'm sitting far above a, and, and that is as a result of encounter. You can quote it, but if you have not had encounter, it will just become the letter that kill it. From today, may God visit you. Amen. I say, may God visit you. Amen. I, can't, I don't like your name. I say, may God visit you. May you experience an encounter that will change your life forever. As you are screaming, amen, you just experience an encounter. Although there are men of God in this country. You put them side by side. Some of them will preach and get people excited. But you look at them and you know that they, are, they don't have encounters. Do you know that Joshua Selman is not saying anything any of our men of God in this country don't say. There is no fresh revelation Joshua Selman is saying. There's no fresh revelation. But what makes him different is that he, he has a, he's at a place of encounter. And he's, a, he's encounter that gives value to what you are saying. Look at someone that say encounter. Are you afraid of the person you are talking to? Look at the person and say encounter. You want to have an encounter? Be an addict to God's house. The house of God is also a place of access to spirit, supernatural and spiritual strength. Supernatural and spiritual strength. The house of God is a place to attack weariness, tiredness and weakness of life. I don't know whether you have gone through something in the day and when you came to God's house, that weariness was lifted off you. You were ushered into a place of spiritual strength. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, any battle of life that has squeezed out energy out of you because you are seated here, seated here this afternoon, I declare that fresh energy enters you. Supernatural strength. And supernatural strength is key to victory. If you faint in the day of battle, your strength is weak. Proverbs 24. Your strength is weak. So supernatural strength is key to victory in life. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. Look at me. Look at me. No matter how much you think you're a sinner, don't stop coming to God's house. I'm telling you, maintain an attitude of camping with God. See, eh, even if you are smoking cigarettes, eh, finish smoking and come and sit down. You come consistently. One day you realize that that appetite is dead. One day you realize that God has taken that appetite in his house. You need supernatural strength. The Bible said that they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. Their strength is renewed. I said their strength is renewed. You need renewal of strength. Look at somebody say, I need renewal of strength. By the time I'm almost so die, pre or mudai, I'm almost sorry. 
na omo abrɛ ti sɛ obi abu omo na me twi nu enye papa enti dia me can be afa ne saa because me nti ase ye sɛ wo fri kuma sɛ ba obi krom wo nti nipa no kasa na me a me ni wo krom no pɛ sɛ me ti wo kasa me me sɛ kasa no saa strength Yesterday I was prophesying in a uh, Sunday I was prophesying in a church, and I caught a man, and there were witches, <laughs> and the witch was not an away man. I don't know, was he an away man? It was a required man. So that means that witches, they are not in the water region. <laughs> they are in the Ashanti region. Makam, <laughs> makam. Ask somebody, where are you from? <laughs> uh, ask the person, where are you? From? Ask the person, where are you from? <laughs> and anybody who says I'm from Mankasim is lying. There, there is no, there is nobody from Mankasim. Some people are two hours away from Mankasim. You enter Mankasim, enter another place, enter another place, enter, walk for thirty minutes before we get to your hometown. <laughs> it's only where hometowns that are roadside. Yeah, yeah, roadside. If you are doing hometown competition, maybe your hometown, you say you are from Kuma, you are, my, my, there is nobody from Kumase here. You are from somewhere, somewhere, in somewhere Kumase. Also, I said, baby, I will free, I need map of Ghana, she said. But me, baby, I'm free, no, I want map of Ghana. I want me, Buana. So, who do you say, sir? Who do you cry, and need you? Supernatural strength. You need strength in the spirit. Also, one day I met a young guy, 23 years old. And I look at the guy, and the guy was a heavyweight in the spirit. 23 years old. He's not into ministry. But the guy was spiritually strong. And I met people who are 70 years and they are shallow. Very shallow. Very, very shallow. It, it just, it just. It just reminds me of an, a, a lecturer I met. When I was doing my first master's, he, he put a question that was wrong. Like, like, he gave us an assignment and the assignment was wrong. <laughs> and everybody answered the assignment except three of us. So we came back to the, the, the class. And say, Eric. And all these guys were airway guys. That's no joke. All, they were all airways guys. But airways are very intelligent. You don't know that. Asantis are just interested in business and how to make quick money. I told him that the question is wrong. He took the paper now, and he himself is confused now. He, he said, the question was a typo. Now bring the real question. He, did, he didn't know what to do anymore. So there are people who look like they know, but they don't know. When I was working in the bank, I had a boss. When they are going for departmental meeting, like head of department and is going to do we do that every monday every monday six in the morning this my boss eh, will ask you to write the report when you write the report and you put the report on his table he will call you eric come then you go he said defend the report it's not that there is a mistake with the report oh. what you have written on tears here it is said you will be explaining man no no who explaining no now or recording now or keep you on you it is Okoha. Now I call your photocopy. That's why when you go to every organization, it's the people who are under the big people who do all the work. You need supernatural strength. Look at someone and say, I need supernatural strength. See, here, see, here. we have gotten to a time where people are very wicked. You need to be strong spiritually. Can you imagine that I have come to tell you, say, Obi Ayemiedro? It's not possible. I, I'm too big for that. Nobody can juju me and it will affect me. 
Can you imagine? There is nothing you put in the ground that when I step in it, my, my leg will be swollen. It's not possible. I have passed that stage. You know why? Because of spiritual strength. Stop eating fufu and accumulate spiritual energy. Because there is a place where fufu will fail you. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. We fight spiritual warfare, not by physical appearance. That is why there is a David that can bring down Goliath. Because there is a David that has spiritual strength and weight than a Goliath. There are things you can come and tell me and I'll look at you and I'll say, it can't happen. It can't happen. You know, one of my daughters came to me and said, a prophet prophesied to him in church and said, A, B, C, D. And said, B, C, he needs to do this. I said, I told her, I'm not discounting or downplaying what the prophet said, but I am also saying I am your prophet. It cannot happen. And the date they gave, we didn't pray nothing. It didn't happen. The opposite of what they said will happen is what happened. There is a way you, you come to a place of spiritual strength that one word carries energy. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Once has God spoken, twice have I heard. A man of authority speaks only once. Doesn't speak two. When, by the time you are speaking twice, come out, come out, it means you are lacking in authority. And we can assess all that in God's house. See, we are getting to a time where the wickedness of the devil will increase. We are getting to a time where friends will kill their own friends. We are getting to a time where people will sacrifice people on the altar of fame and influence. And the people that will survive are people with spiritual energy and strength. They are waiting. It's not everybody that is carryable. There are some people who can never have malaria. The mosquito that bites them dies because their bloodstream is spiritually acidic. The acidicness of their spirituality has affected the physicality of everything they carry. I was in the gym, eh? the, the gym. That's, that's the second time I went to the gym. Or be what treadmill, so treadmill. You know, not treadmill. And now, oh, 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 the person fell down and started foaming. Everybody was doing it. Yeah, yeah, they have not chewed your hands before. I came out of the treadmill. That's it. My, my instructor was there. He was shouting on me. Sometimes he, he, he forgets I'm a prophet. How can you tell me that <laughs> six more? God, God. One day I stood up and I looked at him. I said, I have a meeting. I've closed. <laughs> I brought myself. You can't kill me for my time. <laughs> Apostle B6, I, I, at the treadmill, you know, the girl was just by me and she was walking whilst I was running. When I turned and looked at the girl, I saw a foul spirit that looked like a vulture. Standing by her as she was foaming. I paused the treadmill and I walked toward, I just walked some few meters. I said, in the name of Jesus, I disconnect. Because that thing was a generational thing. That was planted there by the person who bathed the girl. Young, beautiful, fair girl. Putting up shape. You know, people now go to the gym to get shape, including back. So when you see them doing this, is to get, there's an exercise you do to bring out the distance. So you lift up metal. You see some of you here, you are going to copy it. <laughs> so when you see some of them with the thing like that, and they are going up and down like that, you see, they, they do it to bring it out. I don't know if you want to, I can show you how to do it. And I rebuked the foul, the foul spirit. The, the, the nice lady, she just came back like that. 
Then I lifted up her hands. I said, it is over. The last time I, I saw her, she came to me. She said, prophet, can you believe this thing has not happened again? It has not happened again. You know, you see, there are a lot of things that you are running up and down for. If you carry spiritual weight, listen, I'm not saying this thing to Brad. I can't go for a visa interview and they refuse me. I'm too heavy for that. Too heavy. I'm too much for that. By you, one thing, you need to fast and pray. Even carnation cream, and nine, and I, Carnation cream, I was sorry, I won't be that. Because we are not strong spiritually. <laughs> Somebody saw me one day and said that in this prayer, why? A comb follows hair in the dream. <laughs> comb. I said, Kosani Wuti. Now, who should Diana comb no Eddie Wachia? Fa. I bet Jaeba. No, because there is a way you can. Also, there is a way. Who to me use you come come now no ebe ebe ni? Because we we think you know. Come come now as soon. They come Christ. In those times, I used to do counseling. Yes, somebody came to see me. I said a dog was uh, a goat. Yes, was following her in a dream. I said, go and sleep. When it comes, kill it. <laughs> and do kebab and pepper soup and eat. And stop stressing me. Now, Obi Aponchi, the way she was dying, and says, and you're free meat. Did you say, oh, sorry, ah. Who made me what would die? Oh, sorry, now I found so now I'm one new magu. And you are, you are going. And the, the, the reason is that people are not spiritually strong. But you can get that at the place of God's house. You see, as we are coming, we are come, we are coming to God's house, and I'm telling you about people's life story. I'm telling you life stories in the Bible, and I'm sharing testimonies. It brings you to a place where it builds your faith and your capacity, and you accumulate spiritual strength. Some of you can go through the things I'm going through, and if you say, if you say, Eric can go through this, who is my father? Then I can equally go through it. You, listen, you need spiritual weight and capacity. I said this thing here before. One time I was at home. It, it was around 2 a.m. I saw the spirit of death. You know spirit of death? The spirit of death. I saw it in my pastor's house. Like my pastor's house. And that time he was sick. And I knew that he was gone. And I saw a window open. And in the window, when I calculated the window, it was written 15 15. That means that if I don't leave the house to do something spiritual in 15 minutes, the guy will go. My pastor will go. I took oil. I asked my boy to open the gate. I drove with boxes. Apostle, I mean, not shorts. Boxes. Because when I'm in the house, I must free. Where the spirit of God is, there is total liberty. That's why I don't allow people into my house. Because you can come there and the things you see. Well, you can see anything. So, my boy, when they are coming to my bedroom, they need to hear a sound. Because you will see things that will blind your eyes. <laughs> I drove like Jehu. When I got to the place, it was left to two minutes. I took the oil and spoke. And I saw the spirit of death turn his back and walk away. You, you need some le level of spiritual energy and strength to do that. Otherwise, you'll be the one to go. I fear that the people we are raising in the church are shallow. 
That's why there's too much gossip in the church. That's why the things people fight over in the church are trivial things. Because they are not weighty. How we look. What we wear. We come to God's house and pretend we are like we are spiritual people. Get somebody's son and start killing the person and afflicting the person because of what we want from the person. The same is also opposite. A lady is in church all her life serving God. A young man walks up to the church and takes this lady and then starts taking advantage of the lady. Why? Because there is no spiritual strength. There is blessing that goes with coming to God's house. And I pray for anybody today. God is changing somebody's level. Yeah. Those who are one kilo, kilograms in their spirit are becoming 20. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, my eyes is open. I see a staircase in the spirit and I see people climbing those staircases in the spirit. Yeah. Anybody that looks at you and says you are too young to be called a pastor, I declare that after today you are about to operate in depths that will astonish your competitors. In the name of Jesus, as you are shouting an amen, God is ushering you to realms that are inexplainable. You get all those things in God's house. So there are blessings that we receive in God's house. There are a lot of blessings that go with God's house. And these are just some of the few things. There is the blessing of refreshing and rejuvenation in God's house. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount unto wings as eagle. There is a rejuvenation. There is a refreshing in God's house. See, eh? even if you are dying, let, let them bring you to God's house. I'm telling you. No matter the situation you find yourself in, make time. God's house because that is where one of the places on earth that God's blessing is it's one of the places on earth that God's blessing is and I prophesy to somebody you walk in that blessing and then the house of God is a place of healing deliverance and breakthrough So Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 talk, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance And the house of Jacob Shall possess their possession The house of God is a place Where our spiritual inheritance is delivered Into our hands And as you scream your amen Anything that must enter your hands That has delayed Today I stand here and I leverage on my prophetic grace It enters your house Enters your hands now The Lord told me something. He said, I should tell you, if your harassment and your embarrassments does not stop you from being committed to God's house, eh, then your commitment will embarrass your harassments and frustrate your frustrations. Because your commitment to God will commit heaven's commitment, promote heaven's commitment to you. If you can be committed to God with your harassment and your frustrations, I can tell you, in no time, those frustrations and harassment has an expiring date. There is healing in God's house. We had a testimony here some time ago where somebody had a growth, cancer in the breast. Came to God's house. I was just praying for the sick. It disappeared. He doesn't disappear in Kolebu. In God's house. There is healing in God's house. There is a river that makes glad the city of God. The city of God is not a geographical location. It's not Israel. It's a realm we enter when we come into God's house. There is heal healing here. There is breakthrough here. There is deliverance here. As I'm preaching, 
if you are being oppressed by demons, they are leaving you. Because, because you cannot be oppressed by demons and be under this climate and the demons will be afflicting you. There is healing. Another blessing we derive from God's house is angelic visitation. Celestial and angelic visitation. Listen, anytime we are in God's house, there is angelic activities. That's why sometimes prophets will prophesy and say, I see 21 angels. As I'm preaching, there are angels all over the place. There is angelic activity in God's house. Anybody that must favor your cause, where they ever they are now, I speak that the angels of God go right now and trouble them. That they will release that which is yours. Your amen is intercessory prayer. Your amen is intercessory prayer. Your amen needs intercessory prayer. Amen. Your amen needs intercessory prayer. Amen. So it is a place where angels are, are, are on assignment. It's a place, according to Jacob, where angels ascend and descend with the request of people. It's a place where angels harvest the prayers of the saints and mix it with incense and pour it back upon the earth, which come as a result of answered prayer. In the form of answered prayer. I pray in the name of Jesus. Listen, listen. There is one of you here. I pray that there is a grace I have. May God reveal, open your eyes to see the realm where you can assess angels. No, 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 no. It looks like these people don't like this thing. I say, may God open your eyes to a realm where you can assess angels. Eric, have you seen angels before? Several times. Several. Several. Somebody say several. I don't see assessing angels as a testimony. No. Because angels are errand boys. So if I assess my errand boys, why should I be? So, but you see, they excel in strength. As a human being, you are limited. As you are in Ghana now, you cannot go to the U.S. until there is a process. Even right now, it is even becoming difficult to go to the U.K. because the BA just came out with a policy that they are not flying seven times a day anymore. They are now flying five times because the way the world is going now, aviation fuel is becoming very expensive. And very soon, prophetically, what I see, flights will be grounded. Do you know right now, if you even want to apply for an American visa, you need to book now and you are in 2025. That's your time is in 2025. So there are a lot of Ghanaians now leaving Ghana, going to Togo, going to Cote d'Ivoire to assess American visa. But angels don't need visa. They don't need to go for visa interview. They don't need visa booking. They can go to the U.S. and touch somebody's house to remember you. And I prophesy to somebody, eh, anybody who has forgotten about you will remember you. Yeah. There is a Mordecai I'm prophesying to that after today, the book shall be opened. And your name shall be mentioned and you shall be favored. As you scream and amen, your name is just mentioned. God doesn't forget, but God remembers. God remembering somebody is like God bringing the person to focus. The person becomes a, so if you're a photographer, you know, there is something about the camera called focus. When they engage the focus, you see, you can even have a group picture, but when they engage a focus and the, and the photographer doesn't engage the focus very well, it's, it may only be a few people that will, that will be magnified in the picture. Remembrance is when you become and God remembered Noah. He didn't forget about Noah, but Noah was brought to focus. I prophesy to somebody, angels are working on your behalf. As you scream an amen, as, as you are about to pray, the angels are carrying your prayer. They are ascending with your prayer. 
and they are bringing results with your prayer in the name of Jesus I declare one of the ways your enemies can be pursued is by the instrumentality of angels when angels fight battles for you you don't struggle there is a realm of battles that is a realm of the celestial beings and angels must fight those battles for you as Daniel was praying angels were fighting in the name of Jesus as you have come here this morning and as we are in this afternoon I declare that may angels be engaged to fight your battles your amen is looking for energy drink your amen is intercessory prayer I think some of you have heard this testimony before. I, we had a doctor here who was working at the bank. Her promotion was sat on for four years by the, the boss. Prayed a simple prayer. Angels were engaged. Letter came from head office. Proceed on leave. The person who took over and was active promoted my daughter. Jump her two times. After she was jumped two times, three days after that, Head office called the manager, come back to work. There are angels on assignment. And I declare in the name of Jesus. Anybody engaging with craft in your family, I speak to the angels of God to enter your family. And every Assyrian in your family, they will never escape the sword of the Lord. As you scream and amen, that wizard in your family just died. <laughs> Lift up your hands. There is a commanded blessing here. Also, there is a commanded blessing here. There is a blessing that will rest upon people. When I preach to people, I preach from the depth of my heart that they should be blessed. They should be blessed. You need to be blessed. Being blessed makes you serve God better. Being blessed makes you serve God with excitement. Lack does not make you serve God better. If you are sitting here and your landlord is after you, anything I'm saying is passing off your head. You will never listen. Because somebody is after you. A debtor is after you. Lift up your hands. There, which is here this afternoon, he commands his blessing. Lift up your hands. Say, in the name of Jesus. As I pray, because I am in your house, in the commandment blessing, any commanded blessing that I am supposed to assess as I pray I enter the realm I enter the zone I enter the neighborhood of commanded blessing in the name of Jesus somebody lift up your voice and pray you pray there is a blessing you must assess before you leave this auditorium Somebody pray. There is a blessing. It's a commanded blessing. Pray. 
Somebody pray. Somebody pray. There is a command of blessing, you can live here the same. You can live here the same. You can live here the Somebody left up your voice. There is a commanded blessing in God's Rada, 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 Rada,
You know, Apostle, Jesus gave a parable that there was a man that sent his servants to the streets and told them that come for all things are ready. Everything is ready in this kingdom. This is our second prayer. Father, shift me spiritually to another level. <laughs> you need a change of rank in the spirit. You need a change of rank, sir. Ten years you have been in class two. You need to graduate. You need a change of rank. The reason why you are fighting the same battles is because your status has not changed. Because new levels bring new devils. Lift up your hands. Father, change my status spiritually. In the name of Jesus. I'm too shallow. Change my status. I want to leave this university level to a master's level. I want to leave a master's level to a doctorate level. Change my status spiritually. And that is one of the things you can assess in God's house. Lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I pray. As I pray. My status. My status. Spiritually. Spiritually. Is shifted. Is shifted. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice and pray.
Now, lift up your hands. There is something in your life that must be addressed that you can assess. And it will only take the ministry of angels. It will only take the ministry of angels. But we don't pray to angels. We speak God's word that releases angels in operation. You know, every genuine prophet understands the ministry of angels. There are certain angels when I see them and I say it, there will be testimonies of financial miracles. Like what I said last time, and then we had a testimony of how much? 
as testimony because I saw that angel. You are about to pray. An angel is about to move from here and cause a testimony to await you. Jesus name. In the house. Your amen is intercessory prayer. Amen. Lift up your hands. He said, angels are ministering spirit that are sent to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. When you look at God's dealing with Israel, there was the full manifestation of the ministry of angels. To the extent that they even fought Bible, uh, battles. To the extent that they even provided food. That the Bible referred to the manna as angels food. Now lift up your hands. You are about to pray. Your son somewhere needs a miracle. You are sending an angel there. There is something that must take a miracle. You are engaging the ministry of angels. For they hacking to the word of God. They excel in strength and they hacking to God's word. Lift up your hands. I don't know what is your desire, but you are going to pray. And there are angels here this afternoon that are about to ascend with your prayer and then descend with a testimony and an answered prayer. Are you ready to pray? Somebody lift up your voice and engage the ministry of angels. Ei solo feia sociale rada barosa e ti mi hai associato da 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 Shut up, brother, I am 
Now, finally, the house of God is a place of spiritual alignment. It's a place where we are brought into alignment. You know, some of us, eh, we have missed it because of the people we are accompanying with outside God's house. So it is in God's house we are brought to a place of spiritual alignment. Alignment with the spirit is in God's house. Please lift up your hands. That's our last prayer. That's our last prayer. That we'll pray a last prayer for this nation. Okay. I gave a prophecy about this nation some time ago. And we are getting closer to that place. Let me tell you something. You see, in certain countries, terrorists kill citizens. But when terrorists enter a country and they don't kill or attack citizens, but it is the presidency they go after, it means there is trouble. And we will pray about that as a nation. There is something called Holy Ghost intelligence. It's more superior to national security intelligence. So I'm not talking about national security. I'm talking about Holy Ghost intelligence. I'm talking about spiritual intelligence. I'm writing a book on spiritual intelligence. 
If you are not intelligent spiritually, you'll be limited in life. So, the weather may be okay. But those who are spiritual intelligent, when they say tomorrow by this time, there will be abundance of food. Better believe it. Because it is superior for the things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen are eternal. You are coming to pray, Father, in whatever area I have missed it, as I am in your house, I align. I align. Somebody say, I align. I align. I align. Somebody lift up your voice and pray. Somebody, I align. I align. As I'm in your house and I pray, your house and I, I, pray. Align your I align to your plans and your purpose. In the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice and pray. Salagacha de Prodofisca, Gando Salagacha de Bradavos, Etchini Mieso, Garros, Scanima Lofa Sosono Gada Brodovish, Ajaya Sosono Gada Padotis, Etchini Mieso, Ariado, Chada Bradavana, Gadia Tara, Gadia Somebody pray. the brother Shut up, 
Please, I want you to hold somebody's hand. There are two prophecies I gave you concerning this nation. How many of you remember that I told you that I saw in a vision when number two became number one? How many of you remember? Huh? We want to pray for this country. Okay? Whatever happened during the NDC government several years ago should not happen again. What I said is a proverb. Where number two became number one should not repeat itself. Number two, we are going to pray against terrorism attack. Not at any other place but the Jubilee House. I said I'm speaking about spiritual intelligence. There is no, there is no natural, national security minister who can know this. I'm telling you something in the spirit. And it's not far away. It's so close. Because spiritually, the people are already in this country. They are already in this country. Already in this country. And we are going to pray in the name of Jesus. Now, listen to me. Listen. Look, look at me. We have entered into a season where the world will no longer be safe till Jesus comes. So we have entered into a season where Al-Qaeda has been rebirth. ISIS is coming back. Different terrorism, terrorist groups are coming. Because something will happen in the US and another terrorist group will identify with it. That is not Al-Qaeda. That is not ISIS. That is not all those guys. It's a new group that has risen. But not Ghana. Jesus name. Not Ghana. Yes, sir. I say not Ghana. Amen. Look at how long it takes fire service to come to your house when there is fire. Shut up. Then when there is a problem. But prayer can avert it. Jesus name. Prayer can avert it. Lift up your hands. As high as possible. We are coming to pray for this country. That every assignment of the enemy is frustrated. Yes. We are declaring that God will preserve our president. Yes. God will keep him. Yes. God will help him finish his term. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Somebody lift up your voice and begin to pray. So, so Shadarada <laughs> Arise, O Jesus, arise. Arise on behalf of Ghana. Share your solo. Jesus, 
Pastor, DJ, DJ, La Rose, Shada Brana Masso, Solo Gadie, Echa de Brodo Vera, Babrodo Bus, Vicini Mie, Sasa Gajada Roda, Agarra da Badabo, Machada Ria da Era, Babrodo Vera, Babrodo Son, Ai, oh, Ai, 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 Yevorientos, ay 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 ay, ay 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 ay, shodos, di chini mi ay sobra da ay la gara da da ay la mabrodo, ay so, echa da gara da ba da ay la gara da ay la gariado, shado masisa, di ke chini mi ay so, gara da ba iye ko yo no mabrio da ay la mabos. Now listen, listen. Ojo bo unu mibi. As I stand here before God, I don't have a political party. If I have to vote, I vote for the one God reveals to me that he will win. But you see, what I am seeing about this country, we have only one country. And we need to start praying before 2024 election. The most bloodiest election in the history of Ghana will be 2024. It will be bloody. It will be the most bloodiest election bloodiest election but we need to pray that it doesn't happen the most bloodiest election in the history of this country is 2024 and that is why you are a believer that is why I'm a believer that whatever God reveals we can pray and we shouldn't wait till 2024 before we start praying we should start praying now. And we want to pray for this nation. But our, that our 2024, <laughs> within the agenda of God, the person one God wants to bring, let him bring him. There will be no, there will be nothing bloody. The election will be peaceful. And God's will will intercept the agenda of the enemy. This election will be peaceful. Amen. Lift up your hands. Some of you don't have visa. There are people here who don't need visa to fly out of this country. Even with their passport, they can run to American embassy. American embassy will open the door for them. Enter. You, you, are, you may not be one of them. So pray. <laughs> By reason of their passport, <laughs> they will be rescued. But you nobody knows you. So you need to pray. Lift up your hands. NDP wants to break the eight. NDC wants to come back. Because people are hungry. In the NDC party. So they need to come back. So it will be bloody. Write my prophecy down. But we are going to pray that God's will will be done. This nation will not go down. This nation will not go down. Your amen is intercessory prayer. This nation will not go down. I said this nation will not go down. This nation will not go down. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Anything the devil is planning in our 2024 election, we want to pray ahead. Frustrate every agenda of the enemy that the purposes of God concerning this nation will be established. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Somebody pray. <laughs> Divine intervention right from now. Oh Jesus, 
Arise, arise, arise in a mist. Oh, Rade Barria Toyana, Dario Toyana Gados, Shukadas, Oro, Loconumando, Rade Gados, Lashada Rademos, Chacabos, Ali Kalimo. Sabra na moche, ale kadei a soso loka, a chini mi ei soso, la pala kantora, si brodos, eche de brodos, ele garaja so, si brodos, si brodos, eche de brodos, ele garaja pa ele garia ta ele gados, ya ta ele gados, la casa, eche de brodos. Ados arias, hey, hey, shadow rade kada bada bade bade bade, ira da da ya la kara da 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 See, I'm hearing a name Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Who is called Elizabeth here? Eli I'm hearing a name Elizabeth. 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 If you are called Elizabeth, come to me. You are called Elizabeth, but at the same time, you are called Betty. Betty. Walk up to me. I want to pray with you. Bring me oil. This life that I have is a life of Now listen, Christ. look at me. Look at me. My time is already gone. As I prophesy to people, eh, if you have a case like that, Jesus said what I say unto one, I say unto all. As I prophesy to you, in the name of Jesus. Now, those who follow me very well knows that I don't like prophesying about death. But I saw an obituary that they are written 62. 62 on the obituary. 62. But do you know what is 62? You know what is 62? When you see an obituary and they are written 62, it means the person is 62 years. That is what I see on the obituary. And the Lord is telling me something. It's like I'm standing in the means of three and seven. In the means of three and seven. And the Lord says, I should pray for you. Because I saw somebody that is wearing, I saw a lady wearing something that looks like a long garment, that looks like a medical garment. And I saw that lady crying, crying, crying. Crying. What, what is March 7th? That's your birthday. So I stand in the midst of 3 and 37. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I see death around you. And it's like I see a lady crying. Do you have a lady, a child that is a lady? Lady. And what does she do? She's a medical doctor. Yeah. If you are clapping, clap. Uh, you see, she's a medical doctor. But you see, I see a disorder in the spirit. 
And the disorder I see in the spirit is that who is divine? Your in-law. Madam, every assignment of death around your life is terminated. Anybody under the sound of my voice under that same influence, as your amen thunders, death is delivered from everything from your house. As I pour oil on you, you are living long. Beyond the age I am seeing, you are living long. Your time is not over. Your light cannot be dimmed. So I stand in my prophetic office and I declare, come, come, you come. No. Come. Remove, remove the nose mask. Come and stand here. Do you know you're a prophet? Huh? You're a prophet, but you're using prophetic gift to do killing. Okay? I saw in the realm of the spirit, I saw you standing in the midst of caterpillars. You know what is a caterpillar? You know what is a caterpillar? I saw you in the midst of heavy duty tracks and caterpillars. Then I saw that as you were in the midst of those tracks and you were busy, an eagle came to land on your shoulder. But when the eagle came to land on your shoulder, there are eagles I have seen spiritually that has only two pairs of eyes. But this other eagle, when it landed on your shoulder, it has eyes in front, it has eyes at the back, it has eyes at the side, it has eyes here. And the Lord says, I should tell Daniel that he has been ushered into the realm of the prophetic anointing. Azabo, see, my prophetic symbol in the spirit has four eyes. Eyes here, eyes here, eyes here, eyes here. And until the mission comes, I know. By the time I am seeing that somebody also has that fall, that, that, that the guy will be sharp. And that saith the Lord, the prophetic anointing will grow in the means of that place of hostility. Let me finish. Now, what is man, man track? Man track. Is it man track? What's that? You work there. You work there. You will not be there forever. Man, who said eager net to? Or two, you know? Man, who said? The only thing I can see again is your footsteps walking out of the place. God has an assignment for you in his kingdom. And whatever you are doing now, you are just doing it for a purpose. But when the time comes, the Lord will release you into the assignment he has called you to. And you see, interestingly, eh, you have been called into a particular assignment that has something to do with your, the place you come from. You will be sharp. You will be strong. Now listen. If I were you eh, and anybody knows you, you should go and tell your senior pastor to start grooming you and start giving you platform. Because whatever they need is in you. And today, I'm about to usher you into dimensions of God. They are not realms you pray into. There are realms that can be imparted and you can be held and walked into those realms because a man has walked in there before. It is done. 
No, now let me pray for you. From today, your spiritual ears will open. Spiritual eyes will open. You see, all those things I am describing about the eyes are not just physical eyes. Only maybe. Do you know how I know if somebody is a womanizer or per man? One of my daughter brought a guy. I didn't see anything. But when he entered my office, my office started smelling like those goats that love eh? uh -huh, the ones that chase female goats. Uh -huh, he goat. The room started smelling like that. I knew that the person is a he goat. I met one other guy who is a pastor who wanted to submit to me. Immediately I was talking to him. I started smelling fufu. I started smelling granola soup. Started smelling palm nut soup. It means that the guy is a gluten. So there is a realm in the prophetic ministry where you don't see. You smell. It's another sense in the spirit. So sometimes when I'm prophesying, it's not everything I see. Some of the time I smell. Some of the time, I see things like pictures. People ask me, how do I call people's phone numbers? I see something like a screen in my, in my spirit. You know, as I'm prophesying right now, it's like there is something in my stomach playing like a video. And everybody in this service, your face is showing in the video. So you see, whoever I pick, depends on whether I want to talk to you or not. Because when your, your, your picture is already in that video, that dimension of you has been open to me. <laughs> Somebody is confused. <laughs> Do you know I've never prayed to see? I've never prayed. You see, people don't know what they need. That's why they are in need. They pray for things that I've never prayed in my life that God make me see. Never. The gift came and I began to develop it. Through fellowship, through listening to people, I think they carry what I needed. And I have come this far through it. Made mistakes in the process. I've gone to a church before early those days. I look at somebody, I said, I see Rose around you. The person told me my name is not Rose. The whole church went quiet. As if the ground should open for me to enter. The person told you my name is not Rose. And I didn't say your name is Rose. I said, I see Rose around you. <laughs> I said, okay, today we have closed. We'll continue the service tomorrow. When I went to the pastor's office, it's like they have carried the whole world and put it on my head. My head was heavy. What saved me was that the woman came later on and said, oh, I forgot. I have a sister by name Rose. The pastor said, get out of here. Get out of here. So if I had grown in the prophetic, I would have said, there is a, a sister or a lady I'm seeing by you. Who is your sister by name Rose? And she would not have said, I'm not Rose. Prophecy 101. <laughs> Today, such as I have, I give I unto you. Amen. I pray that you are ushered into depths of the prophetic that which I have seen from today you will see you will see beyond the physical from today I declare that your spiritual eyes are open your spiritual senses are activated that which the Lord has declared concerning you in the name of Jesus has come to pass in Jesus name Amen now look at me some time ago, eh, you used to do something in church. You see something, you say it. Sometimes you go and tell your youth pastor and things. You are stopping because of the problems you are going through. But don't stop. Continue from today. Very soon, eh, very soon, I will invite you here to come and preach. Or well, you'll be sharp prophetically. Okay? It is done. It is done. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Lift up your hands. Boss, you have a girlfriend. Do you love her? Yo, 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 yo. Yo, 
yo, yo, yo, yo, yo, yo, yo, yo, yo. Is she the one you want to marry? Hey, Sammy, why are you hiding? Sammy, come. Why are you hiding? <laughs> Boss, go and think about the question I've asked you. Go and pray. Think. Stand. Can I pray for you? Yes, yeah, stand. No, madam. The other girl. Stand. Lift up your hands. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? There, there is somebody saying in your family that you will never be a lawyer. But today I declare that you'll be a lawyer. I, I want to give a very sensitive prophecy, but I don't know whether I should give it or not. Now listen, listen, look at me, look at me. Go home, tell your father that he shouldn't give information about his children anymore to any family member. Okay? Any family member. He shouldn't do that anymore. He shouldn't do that anymore. Because, you see, you hear that you are here. Your problem, your problem in the law school will just be one paper. You fail one paper. You'll be writing the paper and be failing, sir. And it has already started. You have failed one paper. And that is the only problem you have. Because it's a spiritual problem. Or see, unye lawyer. Bio. And there is something else I'm seeing. And the thing is not from somebody's family. The thing is from your family. The thing is from your father's side. I'm looking at your father's side. Your father, I'm seeing one, two, three. I didn't say anything. I, I didn't say anything. Because the thing, the person has said, his children cannot be greater than my children. So, you'll be writing one paper, sir, and never graduate from the law school. Then, your sister will come back from a foreign country, which is an African country, okay, where he's gone for posting in foreign affairs. He will come back from that country. When he comes back from that, she comes back from that country. Instead of now going to a country where she'll make a lot of money, like US, she will never get posting again. There will be all kinds of excuses. There will be problems. They will write her name uh, supernaturally. Her name will not be on the list. There will be all kinds. Because a third person in the family line has orchestrated it. But my name is Eric. I also declare that I want to see a lawyer's wig on your head. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I overrule that which has been declared in the name of Jesus. If you like, write your paper and not write anything. My name is Eric. You will pass. I say you will pass. The great they need to give you, we have given it to you. And you see, anybody listening to me, anybody who has purpose, that you will not rise to where you are supposed to rise. I stand in my prophetic office and if God sent me to you, I declare in the next seven days as days of judgment. They are days of judgment. As you shout a living amen, I said they are days of judgment. It is done. Yeah. <laughs> that is the same way. There was a funeral. And then the same way your father went to tell this person at the funeral that I'm supposed to get promotion before I go on retirement. And the promotion is going to come. The man sat spiritually on your father's promotion. So your father was never promoted till he retired. 
He was never promoted at Ghana Standards Board. Authority till he retired. Because somebody sat on it spiritually. If I am sent by God, the wickedness of the wicked must catch up with them. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anybody who is sitting on that which belongs to you, as you scream your amen, they are uprooted. Now lift up your offering. I think I'm done. I'm close. It's getting to 2 o'clock. I need to close. Lift up your offering. Now look at me. Look at me. There is a lady here. Eh? Look at me. Look at me. There is a lady here. You are dating a guy by name Amos. Somebody introduced you to a guy who said he's in Amsterdam. He said he's in Amsterdam and he does video calls with you and the background of the place looks like he's in a foreign country. The guy is not in Amsterdam. The guy is in East Legon. He's not in any Amsterdam. So, the first money you are sent to the guy because he said he was stranded and couldn't access his card because his card was blocked. The $2,000 as she I call East Legon. I don't know what is wrong with women. You have a very caring boyfriend by name Amos. Why are you going after Frank? Somebody who calls himself Frank. Frank Archer. That's not even the name. Call Archer, hey, a foreign name. Ni mami ni papa nko skuda. So there is nothing foreign about them. He's in East Legon. He's a hustler in East Legon. Hosela in East Legon. There are six of them in a single bedroom house. Six. Six. The next thing I obey here Saturday. Uwo hona mi preach here. What dream me say? Saturday um miti obi your airport. It's all arranged. You go to the airport. You see somebody come with a bag. And everything. All is arranged. Oni wu ko da kwa. Wo wu. Wo se di awa ye wen ni mu. Oni wu. Sir, two thousand dollars. Look what you try and draw Emma Amos. And that innocent guy gave you the two thousand dollars. Who catch and say, Oh, mommy, call your operation. Who did two thousand dollars? Amos. 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 